Hi, I'm Philip with Repython, and I'm very excited that you're joining me today on this very special video course. In this Repython exercises course, you'll practice how to use dictionaries. Our exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You'll also train reading over other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. In the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step-by-step -step how I solved each of them. You'll go through three steps for each task. Learn about the exercise, code your own solution, and then you'll compare your solution with mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That will give you a chance to compare not just our final solution, but also how we got there. You'll start with solving some review exercises in the first section of this course, and then slowly you'll build up towards a proper challenge. Before starting this course, you should have watched the Python Basics course on dictionaries. If you went through that course, then you'll be well equipped to solve the tasks that I'll throw at you in this course. The concepts that you'll practice are creating dictionaries, working with dictionary values, checking the existence of dictionary keys, and iterating over dictionaries. If you're somewhat familiar with these concepts and you want to strengthen your knowledge with some practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. Before you get started, there's another tiny bit of background for this course, which is that I'll use IDLE, the integrated development and learning environment that comes bundled with Python. If you've gone through the Python basics courses, then you're already familiar with the tool. If not, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. If you're just here to train and you're familiar with other code editors, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding tasks. And that's all there is to say to get you set up. If you're ready to get started and do some hands-on programming, then see you in the next lesson. There, I'll introduce you to the first exercise to get you warmed up. Welcome to the first exercise. And suitable for a course on dictionaries, you need to create a dictionary in the first exercise. Create an empty dictionary named Captains. You can pause this video course solve this exercise, and then move on to the next lesson where you see how I solve this exercise. Here on my screen you can see the idle shell, which I'll probably use for most of the exercises. Once we need to write a bit more code, I'll probably change into the idle editor. But if you're not so comfortable with idle, it's also perfectly fine to do this either in the editor of your choice or another Python REPL. Okay, let's warm up by creating an empty dictionary. I can basically think of two solutions for this one, so let's do both because it's a short one. The first one is you declare a variable named captains and then you use curly braces. So an opening and a closing curly brace. And that creates an empty dictionary. The second solution would be you again create the variable name captains and then you use the dict function, which again creates an empty dictionary. Basically, you can use either or. I like the first one a bit better because it's more literal, but the second variant can come in handy when you want to pass an iterable in while creating the dictionary, which might help us later in this course. But for now, we solved this exercise, so let's move on to the next one. Moving on. This time you need to add some key value pairs. Enter the following data into the dictionary one item at a time. So you need to reuse the captain's dictionary that you created in the former exercise. And the key value pairs are Enterprise Picard, Voyager Janeway, and Defiant Cisco. Again, pause this video course, solve this exercise, and then move on to the next lesson to see how I solve it. To add a key value pair to your dictionary, use the square bracket notation. 
if you want to add enterprise as a key and Picard as the value, you write captains and then an opening square bracket. And then inside of quotes, the name of the ship, which is enterprise in this case, then a quote to close the string and the closing square bracket equals the string Picard. Once you press enter, you can check the captain's dictionary that you created in one of the former lessons. It still is a dictionary, but now it contains the key value pair Enterprise and Picard. Let's do this for the other ships and captains. So you write captains and then square brackets Voyager equals Janeway and captains square bracket defiant equals Cisco. And if you check the captain's dictionary now, you can see that the dictionary now has three key value pairs, Enterprise Picard, Voyager Janeway and Defiant Cisco, which you entered one item at a time. Now the captain's dictionary contains some key value pairs. And now you need to check the existence of two keys. Write two if statements that check if the string Enterprise and the string Discovery, both with an uppercase first letter, exist as keys in the dictionary. If the key doesn't exist, set their value to the string unknown. It's good that this exercise asks you to do two if statements, because then I can show you two solutions to this exercise with each if statement. So to check if a key exists in a dictionary, you can write if and then the name as a key, for example, the enterprise string, not in. If you want to check if a key is not in a dictionary, you use the not in if statement. And if you want to check if a key is in a dictionary, you just write, for example, if enterprise in dictionary name. So in this case, we want to check if the key is not in the dictionary. So we use not in and the dictionary name is captains. And then on the next line, you want to set the value of enterprise to unknown if it doesn't exist. So similar to a former lesson, you write captains and then square brackets, then the key enterprise, closing square bracket equals, and then it should equal the string unknown if it doesn't exist. And once you press enter and enter again, we can check the captain's dictionary if the key existed or not and was overwritten with unknown. And as you can see, it's still Picard because the key existed. So the if statement returned false and didn't put the value unknown to the key enterprise. Another way to check if a key exists in a dictionary or if a key doesn't exist in a dictionary, you can write a similar statement, but with the keys method in the end. Let me show you how this looks. If, and this time we want to check if discovery not in captains and now dot keys colon. And then on the next line, similar like before, this time the ship name is discovery. So you set captains discovery again to unknown if the key discovery doesn't exist in the captain's dictionary. Again, let's check how captains looks. And now you can see that discovery was added to the dictionary with the value unknown. Generally, you might use the first variant. There is a subtle difference between it, which shouldn't bother you that much right now. But just so you know, there are different ways of doing it. Both are fine for now. I prefer the first one but it's up to you. Now it's time to loop over the dictionary. Write a for loop to display the ship and captain names contained in the dictionary. For example, the enterprise is captained by Picard. Again, you can pause this video course, solve this exercise on your own, and then hop over to the next lesson to see how I solve it.
Now you need to loop over the dictionary. And there is one important part with this exercise here, and that's that you want to print the key and the value at the same time. So you don't just care about the values or just the keys, but you want both at the same time. And that's where the items dictionary method comes handy in place. You start with a for loop, and then you refer to the key and the value in your for loop definition. And there you can use the variable names just like you want. In this case, ship and captain, because, I mean, you can use what you want, but it should make sense. So here it's the ship and the captain from our dictionary, which are the keys and the values in captains. That's the dictionary. And then you use the items dictionary method. And this dictionary method gives you back a tuple with the key and the value for each for loop step, which then is the ship and the captain string. And then you can print in the next line inside the for loops body. You can create an F string with V and then you add in the ship variable with curly braces, V curly brace ship closing curly brace is captained by, and then again, curly braces, captain. And then quote to close the string and the closing parentheses. So there you print an F string. Again, the variables that you format into this string are ship and captain, which are the variables that you defined in your for loop definition. So if you named your variables differently, then in the F string, you would refer to different variables. So here, ship is the key, which I defined, and captain will be the value. And when you press enter, you can see the output of the print function call, which is the enterprise, is captained by Picard, the Voyager is captained by Janeway, and the Defiant is captained by Cisco, and then last but not least, the Discovery is captained by Unknown. <laughs>